Okay, you guys, I'm here to talk about Black Ink Crew um, Compton episode four and five. I'm gonna do both videos in one. Sorry about the delay. I just had to work all weekend, had to work extra hours. So when I get home, I've been tired. I'm gonna try to get better, but I ain't making no promises. When it comes to these reality shows, um, I like to support, you know what I'm saying? But they're starting to get so like, are you serious that I'd be like, I don't have time for that. Um, but Black Ink Crew Compton, y'all know I said that I was gonna stick to this. I'm from Compton, I'm gonna support this show. I believe in the vision of this show, so I'm gonna support. Anyway, it started off with, well, I'm gonna try to go step by step, but you know how this works. Um, check out, like, Bobby Blue, Ashley Miller, they both do Black Ink Crew Compton, so make sure you're checking out their channels. But Tim tells KP about what Lemire said and at the uh, opening or whatever, the grand opening. And, you know, he didn't, he just kept saying, you need to check that. He was like, I can't tell you for, um, verbatim what he said, but you need to check him. It was just like he was hating, basically. And they he said, okay. So now KP is feeling some type of way. A lot of people be mad that Tim be you know, really caping for uh, KP. But I'm like, that's what cousins do. That's what business partners do. That's what people that want you to succeed do. So the relationship that KP and Tim has, I don't see the problem. And I'm the type of person, if I overheard somebody talking about my cousin or my business partner, the way Lemire was hating on KP, I would have told him too. So, it is what it is. I, I like Tim. It's something about Tim that I like him. I don't see a problem with him. There are some little things that he do that he needs to be called out on, but uh, now I like him. Um, Voodoo Doll and Nessie. I'm, I'm, I'm over it. I'm over it. Okay, yes, we got more into debt of her cult life and her stepfather and how now she's mad at her mom and for her mom putting her in that situation. If I was her, I'd be mad at my mama too. So I'm not mad at her with that. I just feel like let's, let's move on. Let's talk to somebody. Let's deal with this situation. So I hope when they come back next season, if it's the next season, um, that she has start to heal. She has start to deal with her issues because listening to her story, all I can say was that girl need to talk to somebody. She's really going through it and I don't know being on camera is helping this situation. So that's all I have to say about that. Um I do like when her drip and Nessie went for drinks or whatever, and they were, Voodoo was telling them about how Barbie curved her ass, and how it's hard for her, I mean, it's usually not hard for her to turn a straight girl, I'm like, girl, some straight girls just don't want women, like, it's okay, it's okay to just be friends, like, everybody don't want they box licked by another broad, like, I don't understand, or why, all, like, I'm not even going to say, oh, I just don't know why y'all think that it's okay or it's, um, to even try to turn a straight woman. That bitch is going to want dick at the end of the day. Like, girl, girl stop. Um, that's just a, the wrong tree you barking up. The one you need to bark up is sitting right next to you. When Nessie killed, kissed her, I said, that's the one, won't you? And she trying to show you she wants you, but you keep throwing Barbie in her damn face. Um, Drip trying to give them damn advice. I'm sitting there laughing at that situation. I was like, girl, don't take no advice from him. Don't do it. It's not going to happen. So, anyway. Um. I think it was, yeah. Danielle tells Lemire that she wants a second truck or whatever. Um, she was in the bed, but she wants a second truck. She wants to make more money because of the medical bills of the baby. They don't know what was down the line for the medical expenses and fees and all the bills and all that kind of stuff. So she wants to get a second truck. He like, no, 
He like, girl, we got enough problems and issues right now that we need to deal with. And getting a second truck is not going to help. And I'm saying that too. I'm sitting there like, you're going to have to pay somebody to run the second truck. With you, he didn't have to pay you. Y'all was building together. But if somebody else run a second truck while you down and out with the baby, he's going to have to pay that person. And that's more money. So, no. No, I think you're thinking of it wrong. I think she be punking the shit out her dude on camera. Um, I think she doesn't take his feelings into consideration. She's selfish. Danielle is just, I don't like her. It's, it's something about her that I just, I, she rubs me the wrong way when it comes to the way she treats him. Um, Because even like, I'm just going to go on with it. Like, even when they went and looked for the damn truck and she just didn't care and said she was going to go buy a damn truck for $120,000, I was like, she's not being considerate and you're crying about a $900 bill? You're crying about a $900 bill, but you about to give him another debt of $120,000 regardless if he had it or not in his bank account. I just felt like she was being selfish. Um... While he's dealing with Danielle and his second truck and all that kind of stuff. While he's talking about how people conduct business and how people are bad businessmen. He's sh he shown that. He's shown that this whole episode of how he conducts business and how he's a bad business person. Regardless of how in his feelings he is. You know what I'm saying? I understand he's dealing with a lot at home. Danielle can be a handful. But you can't get on KP when you're not handling your business right. You left clients like, like you just didn't care. And I was just like, wow. He talking about somebody else's business ethics bothered me. So they had the grand opening. It was a success for them. In my opinion... Black Ink Crew Chicago has the best tattoo artist, in my opinion. I really think they have the best tattoo artist, because I'm telling you, ain't, no, ain't none of them. None of them messing with Van when it comes to tattooing. I'm sorry. Not in their sleep. Not in them as a collective. <laughs> none of them. So, um, yeah. I, I, I wish them much success. I don't think I would want any of them to tattoo me. I'm just saying. Now, Voodoo Doll wasn't that bad. Um, KP's wasn't that bad, but they were basic. And for a grand opening, you saying what you want to do, and all this, the first day of the shop being open, I just was like, this is what y'all showing? Especially when it came to drips uh tattoo i was like he should be the apprentice <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> his work looked like the apprentice work no shade because i like him i think he's a cool dude on the show no problems with him um but his work i was like mm, okay but people are coming in from the mirror the mirror's not there and his excuse is he had to deal with his ice cream truck and that came as a priority for him instead of the opening of the show instead of calling your boss and let your boss know instead of calling your clients and let your clients know that you wasn't gonna make it that I, I didn't understand um Columbus Short was the celebrity for the show of this episode you know they always try to have a, a, a celebrity and Columbus Short came like a whole smoker <laughs> He gave me smoker tease. When he ran and was talking about how the dude had got his head blew off, I was just like, he gives me smoker tease. Um, but it, it's a... It, I, I don't want to glorify this. I don't want to make it think it's okay. But I was with Drip. Like, okay, the day goes on. Because um, that is the life in Compton. You do be like, damn, that just happened. But you just... Keep on pushing like you can't soak in it. You know what I'm saying? And it was a messed up situation. I understand they don't want that heat around their shop. But when they all ran out, I was like, why y'all running out? Y'all don't want this on y'all shop. Y'all sure running your nosy asses outside. 
I ain't gonna lie. I would have ran my ass outside to be nosy too. But I'm just saying, don't make that as no excuse. Um, yeah, Columbia Shore gave me smoke her tease. <laughs> That's all I could think about in that situation. Anyway, since Lemire is not showing up for work and not returning phone calls and stuff like that because he's professional, um, KP, well, before KP met with this new girl, Alana, he had met with his mom, and his mom gave him great advice of, that's your shit. You can't worry about nobody else, and you can't let nobody else bring your stuff down. So, it is what it is when it came to Lemire. Like, I'm sorry. Like, it, business is business. It is what it is. So, um, he meets up with this girl named Alana, that's 20 years old, from El Monte. Like she said, El Monte is, a, like, more of a Hispanic, um, little city. Um, I, I know people live out there that's black, but it, it is more of a Hispanic city, so I get that. Um, I think she's a, a cool tattoo artist. What we saw of her drawing and her work... I didn't see a problem with her. They meshed well. It wasn't on no flirting situation. I've heard people say that he hired her because of her titties and all of that. That's not what he gave me when he was sitting down there interviewing her and seeing about what she was going through in her life and what made her want to be a tattoo artist. I didn't see him flirting with her. I didn't see him looking at her in a way of, oh, I want to smash her. Oh, she's beautiful. And she's going to bring people in the shop because she's beautiful. He was focused on all her work. And I, I don't even want to let that narrative be out there that he, like, hired her because of her boobs. Like, you bitches are insecure. Like... <laughs> All of them said that, and I'm like, are y'all insecure because she got titties and, 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 you, and you over here looking like a little girl? Is that the problem? Because I didn't, I was just so baffled of the way the women treated this girl like it was her fault that she got fucking hired. So, he hires her, she comes to the shop, and they treat her like she didn't belong there. The girl said, Drip didn't have a problem. Um, Tim is the one introduced her to KP, so he didn't have a problem. They didn't look at her in a sexual way for her coming to the shop. And then Drip said she was cute, but Drip wasn't saying like, oh, I want to hit that. So, yeah, hire her. That's not what happened. Um, but anyway, she comes to the shop. Barbie asked her, you know, did she have an appointment? She like, no, I'm a tattoo artist. They like, by who? And I'm like... Apparently by the owner. Nobody's looking at the owner. So she says that, you know, KP hired her. KP gives her um, the mirror's chair because he's not answering his phone. He's not coming to work. It is what it is. Then Voodoo Doll goes off. She goes, she, I would have, see, see, the boss that I am, the leader that I am, I would have sent them bitches home. When it comes to your shop, how are they dictating who's got a chair, um, your decisions? I didn't understand that. So her questioning KP of his higher decisions to this girl, I'm just sitting there like, okay, little Donna, I don't know why y'all think y'all have so much pull and so much th shit y'all can talk to y'all boss when you only the apprentice. You ain't even got a chair yet. So apparently you don't need one because you don't know how to respect your boss. Um, this is bullshit. She's only been here a little while. And I'm like, apparently, he saw something in her work that booted her up more than he booted up Voodoo Dog. I'm sorry. I don't, just because, like, she's been in the game for six months still can make her work better than Voodoo Dog. I don't understand because she ain't been in there long. What, she can't draw better than her? No, nah, that's stupid. Um... I just felt like nobody gave her a chance, and it was wrong. Your gripe was with KP, and y'all took it out on this girl. And when you found out how young she was and how long she's been tattooing, it was just like, fuck her. I ain't got time for her. I'm hating on her. It was it was immature of Voodoo Dog, period. I don't care what nobody said. Um, anyway, Lemire... Playing with Danielle is 
when his second client comes in and he's not answering the phone, he's not there. So they gave his second client to Alana. Everybody pissed off. And I'm sitting, Drip was the only one like, okay. Like, you should have been at work. It is what it is. <laughs> so, hey. Um, so he finally comes like an hour and a half late. Not even considering his client talking about his money. You didn't you didn't care about your money when you didn't even call your client and tell her you was gonna be late. So when he gets there, Alana gets the, got the client. So he's mad, he's calling them whack, he doing all this kind of money. It was a stupid move. And I'm sitting there like, no, that was a boss decision to me. Cause um why should he pass up on money or whatever or have a lot of pass up on money because you want to play with your ice cream truck. That, that's dumb to me. Um but then he go he leaves because Tim was like Y'all ass don't like what it is, what's going on in here. You can leave. So, he ended up leaving. I don't know if the producers pumped him up to go back in there and say what he got to say. But while he was outside talking to the producers, Nessie in there popping off. Instead of her going outside and check on her homeboy, she's in there popping off on some dudes. And when dudes pop off on her back, they're the wrong ones. You and there are arguing with three dudes about your homeboy's bad professional decisions. Then you get mad because they pop off on you and talk shit to you back. And now he's disrespectful to women after she was just disrespectful. No, it don't work that way. I'm tired of women feeling like they can be disrespectful to men. And when men pop off, then it's a problem. I, I don't get that. Um... He wasn't putting his hands on her. Then he did try to unplug her shit, and I thought that was wrong. Don't put your hands on nobody else's shit. It won't be no problems. But at the same time, bitch, if you so concerned with your homeboy, go out there with your homeboy. That's period. Um, but Lemire got pumped up by the producer, so he came back in, and he just straight go at Tim and call him a flunky or a lackey or whatever the hell. Um... And I'm sitting there like, so Tim was like, you know, you can catch this fade. I said, see, that's, that's the Compton in us, I'm telling you. Like, you you doing all this talking, like, ain't got nobody got time for that. Let's just catch these fair ones real quick. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> so they get all in each other's face and it goes off. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes back on, you know, it's tension in the damn shop. It's tension. Um, Nessie is mad. KP don't really want to talk to Nessie. Nessie don't like fucking like, if you don't want to talk to me, I don't want to talk to you type stuff. And I was like, well, I would have said, get your shit <laughs> and go home until you cool off. But, you know, whatever. Um, he said she needs to humble herself. Then when Voodoo comes in, he tells Voodoo that Alana got Lemire's seat. She's pissed off about that, but she going to shut up for the, for the moment. I'm like, whatever. So Tim tells them about how he has a photo shoot going on that he wants them to be a part of and for them to get a billboard. Now they super excited. See, I think y'all on here for fame and attention because some of y'all wouldn't be in my shop or I, I felt some kind of way I wouldn't be in the shop. You know what I'm saying? But all y'all feel like, oh, it's an opportunity to get some exposure, so I'm going to suck it up and I'm going to be quiet. Um... The girls go out, which I like about these girls on this show. They're getting along so far. They're kind of encouraging each other. It is what it is. I like the sex talk that they be all talking on here. I be so here for it. Because everybody be open and honest. When they, if y'all ain't seen they deleted scenes on VH1, go watch they deleted scenes. Be hilarious. Voodoo Dog is a real free spirit. That's all I know. When they were talking about Peg, and I was like, voodoo dog, girl, that, mm, you can have that. You can have that. Um, Nessie say her mom is coming to town, and you know her mama is white, so she ain't used to the life that she's about to expose her mama to. So she wants them to turn down a ratchet. I said, well, bitch, don't bring your mama. 
like, why are you bringing your mama? Then I'm sitting there looking at her mama's side eyes because she tell her, she been sit, uh, living in L.A. six years and her mama never came to visit. Bitch, because you on TV. That's why your mama came to visit. And I think that's foul. Period. I think it's foul. <laughs> Let's go on to talk about her mama because I don't want to go back. Her mama and her sister get there. She had a beautiful sister. But her mama and her sister get there, and her mama kind of talking shit about Compton. So I was just looking at her mama like, well, why you there? Why you there? Cause I understand Compton got this stigma of, every, of it's bad out there, it's not safe out there, yada, yada, yada. But this shit happens everywhere. Shooting happens everywhere. Killings happen everywhere and i'm noticing every time i turn on cnn someone else is getting shot somewhere else so don't do it <laughs> um anyway like i said danielle's on bed rest so that's really more stress on lamir um i was just like this girl she works my nurse so i don't care about talking about them Alana has a new client, and her power charge is out, and so she wants to use, no, what's his name, Drip told her, hey, Voodoo Doll has the same thing as you, so why don't you go ask her, Voodoo Doll was like, yeah, girl, oh, no, bitch, oh, that pettiness of Voodoo Doll earned the hell out, this girl didn't do nothing to you. This girl didn't do, your gripe is with KP. I don't understand why you treating this little girl like this. Your gripe is with KP. Then, see, you fucking with my money. I'm really not going to like you. All gloves are off when you messing with my money. And that's what she did. She allowed, she didn't allow that girl to use her power charge, how much she should be well prepared and da 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 stupid shit. Instead of being a uh, person that's like my sister's keeper, I got your back type stuff. You told this girl no, so she wasn't able to do the tattoo. You not only made her look bad, but you made the shop look bad, because then they're going to be like, they got people over there, and they ain't even got their shit right. That make your shop look bad, stupid. Then you got the little stupid side homegirls over there just laughing and not really telling her that's wrong. Barbie, that's your homeboy shop. You should have said, you know what? <laughs> I understand y'all being petty and y'all don't like each other. Y'all ain't feeling each other. But this comes down on our brand. Um, I was so mad with that. Anyway, uh, I talked about homegirl mama didn't care. Oh. Voodoo doll, you in there teaching them how to suck dick at work. I was with Alana, like, at work. This is what we doing, like, I don't care if you're a free spirit. You should have taught them that shit when y'all was all out as women and y'all was talking about pegging and all that. Like, come on now. Anyway, Lemire goes to apologize to KP and tell him now what's going on and the whole time i'm watching this and he going through this i'm like won't you go talk to your boys won't you go talk to your peoples and that's the same thing kp was saying kp was like he could have you could have came and said something i got kids i would have understood but you took out your frustration on everybody and that shit wasn't cool so um what else happened after that oh then we see Tim comes in the barber shop and he's letting them know that his homeboy had got shot in the uh in the tattoo shop. He came and said his homeboy got shot in the barber shop and also the barber shop owner in Hearthstone, California. And I remember seeing that on the news, hearing about it from people that I know. So yeah, it was a sad situation. It affects people, and you can see just because he's a grown ass man that affected him, especially somebody he said. He rolled with together with ride or die friends, you know what I'm saying? And you see this person get shot, you know, you feel some type of way. I did like how Drip was, you know, there for him and prayed over him. I thought that was cool. That's why I said I like Drip. It's something about him that I like him. Um, did y'all notice when, 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 uh, last, the episode four, when they kept getting into it, 
that dude Drip had had Tim back every single time. When Drip got into it with, I mean, when Tim got into it with Nessie, and when Tim got into it with with Kate, with uh, Lemire, that fool Drip be right there having his homeboy back. I give him that. Um, the photo shoot was a hot mess. It was a hot ass mess. And I'm sorry, y'all gonna be mad, but I don't care. Because right is right, wrong is wrong. Voodoo, Voodoo Doll started that shit. Voodoo Doll started that stuff with Alana by pulling KP to the side um, and telling... Wait, let me go back before I get into that. Lemire came to the damn photo shop. Tim was in his feelings because his cousin didn't tell him that Lemire was coming. KP ended up talking to Tim and letting him know about the whole little family situation. Let's stall him out. It is what it is. Um, Nessie got her mama there, mama there, so she thinking everybody gonna be cool. Wrong. But anyway. So, Voodoo Dog pulls KP to the side. And she tells him about how Alana is messy and she's dirty and she's this and she's that. So, Alana is like, bitch, are you talking about me? Walked up, straight up. Bitch, you talking about me? And she looking like a deer calling headlights. Like, bitch, what, huh, huh, huh? What, what are you talking about? So when Alana pulled them pictures out of fucking voodoo doll and started throwing them all over the goddamn photo shoot, everybody's in their feelings. And I'm sitting there like, fuck that. The gloves was off when that bitch made her miss her money. <laughs> Period. Now... Was the picture so bad that you just gonna shame her and you exposing her? No, they wasn't bad, you know what I'm saying? Because the girl is a free spirit, so you not exposing nothing on her. Um, but everybody jumping on Alana was bogus as hell. Everybody jumping on her bogus because nobody stopped them girls from being petty and making her miss her money. Now, you know, okay, KP didn't know nothing about that. He didn't know what was going on, but Barbie did. Barbie did. So when Barbie was going off on the line, I'm like, you need to, you should have kept that energy for your homegirl when your homegirl was over there messing up y'all brand. So I don't want to hear that. Um, I was on Alana's side when it came to this because I felt like they were wrong. They were all ganging up on her. They're talking about slut shaming her. Then she came out naked in front of people's mans, in front of people's moms and sisters on the side. I'm giving them how much of a free spirit she is. Some people like just don't have no tact. And I'm sorry. Like, I would have been like, bitch, like, you don't see my mama sitting right here while you just coming out here with your coochie ass out. Like, no, that's stupid. That's stupid to me. Um, I didn't see the mom cheering that on. <laughs> Anyway, that's all I got. That's all I got for Black Ink Crew, uh, Compton, episode four and five. I will be back on this week for my reviews. Um, I have some time to do reviews this week. I might go live this week. I'm gonna really try. <laughs> um, and we can talk about, like, some things that's in the news, on the blog, stuff like that. Um, but like I said, check out my boo Scotty from Mrs. Still Standing. Check out... Ashley Miller, check out Bondi Blue. We all do Black Ink Crew Compton reviews, so make sure you're checking us all out. I will be posting um, Basketball Wives and Loving Hip Hop. I'm going to try to post them tonight. If I don't, I have tomorrow off, so I'll post them tomorrow. All right, you guys. Peace. <laughs>